thought you were gonna pepper spray me. No, please, no, stop. Sit back. Oh, I got a bad just, one. Just spray her. No, I have just spray her at this point. Her, it's it's very very difficult to get somebody into the back of a police car like that, and she's nine years old. Imagine what happens when we have a full-grown individual that we're dealing with. You talk about the psychological impact on the officers, but what about the psychological impact on the nine-year-old girl who had, who had to deal with this traumatic situation? In this disturbing video, we will witness a distraught nine-year-old girl being apprehended, handcuffed, and placed in the back of a Rochester Police Department patrol car. Additionally, she was sprayed with a chemical irritant by officers after what they described as disobedience to commands to place her feet in the car. Despite the department's suspension of these officers, they did not disclose their names. However, through extensive investigation, we managed to uncover the identities of the officers involved in this reprehensible event. Allow us to introduce these dirty cops, Alexander Lombard, John Soares, and Hannah Schneeberger. It's a common occurrence for law enforcement officers to strictly follow the details provided by the caller to the dispatcher, regardless of the caller's veracity. This tendency often leads to a bias where the first person to report a domestic dispute is more likely to be believed, even if their account is false. It's kind of like officers operate on autopilot mode, following the dispatcher's instructions without applying their own judgment upon arrival. This issue came to light in a specific incident from January 2021, when a dispatcher sent Officer Alexander Lombard to respond to a domestic dispute call. The entirety of the incident was captured on body camera footage. Come here, come here. I just gotta talk to you. You're not in trouble. Come here. Come here. Stop. You're not in trouble. Come here. Come here. I'm not going to walk all the way down the street for you. Come here. It's freezing out. Six Harris. Just uh, start a rig. Get off of me! Stop. What's going on? Get off of me! What's going on? Get off of me! I'm not gonna get off. Get off! What is going on? How can I help? Get off me! No, because I don't you're not gonna run. Harris, you're not gonna run away from me, okay? Because I'm gonna have to chase you. Okay? And I got like six other cars coming to chase you. I don't care. All right? I don't care. Well, come and talk to me, please. Oh, I don't want to. Dear, dear. What is it? What I don't is, not what want is to. What is going on? I don't want what did you tell your mom? I don't want what did you tell your mom? I don't want to. Huh? I'm not going with it. Huh? I'm not going with it. That's fine. But what did you tell your mom? What? What happened? Why are you so upset? She stabbed my dad. Who did? <laughs> she did? According to the dispatcher, the girl apparently made statements about harming herself. But as you can clearly hear from the video, the girl stated she doesn't want to live with her mother along with the other custodial parent she is living with. Any trained officer should be able to tell that the problem with this girl is her mother, who, as you can see later in the video, is saying abusive words to the girl in front of the officer. This should raise a red flag and involve appropriate authorities. This is one of those cases when a child doesn't want to live with the parent who won custody. This is mostly due to that parent either being neglectful or abusive. We don't clearly know the whole story, but the following part in the video clarifies that, and the officers should know better than to proceed to do what they are about to do later in the video. What is, what is going on? What did you tell your mom? What did you tell your mom? I'm not going with it. Huh? I'm not going with it. Huh? I'm not going with it. That's fine. But what did you tell your mom? What? What happened? Why are you so upset? She stabbed my dad. Who did? <laughs> she did? Okay. My blood you seen off of my leg. The fuck? No, it was not, because when he walked in the house, he was holding his stomach. It was my blood. How the hell? So your, so your lip gonna bleed all the way down to your stomach to your pants? Who's your dad? 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 Who
you, 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 you finna really make me do man, man. really finna hold go in on your on, ass. Now, cause she nine years old and she really behind. That's why she's done. That's, that's why she's done. That it's okay. Happened, you sit there, watch this man put his hands on me all the time. You oh, all even, the time. Did you stab him? No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. How do you know that? Because how I, do you know that? Yes, because when he when he walked in the house, when he walked in the house, 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 house come on. his he was holding. Okay, so your Hold lip gonna go over his blood. He, he had me in the head. I'm not. I'm not so saying. So you stabbed him? Are you? I'm sitting here arguing with him. Yeah. So I stabbed him. I stabbed him. Yes, you did. I just come put on. the police on him. They gonna find him? Come no, he is. No, no, no. They gonna find Here, him? Just come with me to my car. You gonna get your ass whooped? Sitting here lying. I'm not. Come on. Uh, I'm not going to arrest him. First right. of all, Stevianna, uh -huh. you gonna bring your ass to this oh. house, and I'm gonna ask you one more time. You gonna bring your ass to this house if I yoke your ass up and drag you home? I got custody. You're my child. So you gonna take your ass home right now, and you gonna take your ass in the house? All right. Hold on. Not helping. I'm in the house now. Come on. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, dear. All right, listen, do me a favor, do me a favor, go back to the house, go back to the house, all right? Dear, you're not running away from me, you're not running away, come on, come on. Can I help you? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Can I help you? Can I help you? Come on. All right, let's go. Stop. Enough. Can I help you? Enough. You can suck my and you can suck my and you can suck my up. Enough. What up? What up? shit about me. What up? Come on, stop. What up? Stop. What up? What up? What up? What up? Get out of here. Get out of here. Right, you still talk. Let me go. You don't talk though. Yeah, mom's trying to start a fight with car driving by now, so get a couple cars down. Stop! Stop! Put her in your car. No! No! Yeah. Stop. I want my dad! I want you gotta my tell, dad! Listen, you gotta tell this officer where you told me. I want my dad! Come on. I'm not going nowhere. Of course, uh, we don't need you. <laughs> hey! Get back in your house! No! I want my dad! You're not gonna run off. I want my dad! The officer seems to not be paying attention to the girl as she explains the situation. This clarifies how officers don't really care about anything else than what the caller had said. Even if it's true that the girl did what the mother said she did, I think it's pretty obvious why. The mother even verbally abuses the girl and almost assaults her in front of the officer. But, as I said earlier, the officer is on autopilot to take the child away. The mother even went on to continue foul-mouthing and almost starting a fight with the people passing by who seemed to be concerned about what was going on, completely disregarding her own daughter being harassed by the officer. I want my dad! I'm not getting no car! Look at me. Okay, Abby. Don't look at me. 
Get in the car. I'm done telling you. Get in the car. Get in the car. You got a rig stage. Alright, uh, yeah, just keep him stage for a minute. Fresh, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Just need a neighborhood check. Mom's out here. I catch. Mom's out here trying to fight people driving by. 129. She's the one that called originally. Okay, what do you want, a depot or what? I'm ready to take mom. I'll take mom. Stress and I'll go arrest her. I mean, I really... According to the state's mental hygiene law, a person who is believed to be mentally ill and in imminent danger of harming themselves or others can be involuntarily admitted to a psychiatric hospital for evaluation and treatment. This applies to individuals of any age, including minors. If a minor is deemed to be a danger to themselves, the law allows for their parents or legal guardians to initiate the process for involuntary admission. The overarching goal of this law is to ensure that individuals who are at risk of harming themselves receive the necessary mental health evaluation and treatment to prevent harm and promote recovery. It emphasizes the importance of balancing the protection of individual rights with the need for intervention in cases of severe mental illness and imminent danger. Relax, gear. Stop. You're I want my dad! Listen, you gotta I want, tell this off. I want my dad! I'm not going nowhere, I want my dad! Of course, son, we don't need you Hey! Get back in your house! Here, go have a seat. No! I want my dad! I'm not gonna run off. I want my dad! Listen, you're gonna be fine. Stop. I want my dad! I'm not getting in no car until I see my dad! Here, just stop for a second. I want my dad! Here. You got two four shots. I know. 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 I I I want my dad! Might be the, this. I want my dad! I want my dad! I want my dad! You gotta dad. stop and take a breath. Stop. You're alright. Stop. Can I just see my dad? I want my dad! Wait, can I just please get the snow off of me? I'll get the snow off of you. Get in the car! You've had your chance. Get in the car now! Okay? Okay? You've had your chances. I want what are you doing? I want what are my you dad. doing? I want my you're gonna go to jail now too. I want my Have dad, seat, wait! Yeah. I just wanna see my dad, please! For the last time! Yeah, get I in want the my dad! Get in the car! I demand a... I don't care what you demand. Let's go. I She's want... got her leg underneath my car. Stop! I want my dad! I want my dad! Stop or you're gonna get yourself hurt! Stop! He's hurting me! I wanna then get in the car! Please help somebody! No! You want me to grab it from the other side? I want my dad! Stop! Sit her up. Stop! Sit up! No! You're acting like a child. I want to cry. Stop. I am a child. I just went back to the house. My arm, I, I have up. a bad right. arm. Stand up. Stand up. You got to let that go. Stand up. I have a bad arm. Then stand up.
I'll get off of you, but you have to get up, okay? Will you get up? Can you let go of her? I got her. I got her. Come on. I will. They will let go, but you gotta stand up. Stand up. Will you stand up for me? Will you stand? Hey, look at me. Stand up. I can't the way I'm sitting. Ready? Yep. Good job. Pull a bit more. Pull a bit more. Look. Go if you're gonna be if you're gonna stop. Dear, why okay. you just stop for a Come second on, and take a go. deep breath. Hey, please just stop. Please. I will get your dad. Otherwise no, I'm you said that you were gonna pepper spray me. No, please no, stop. It is important for mental health professionals or certain designated individuals to be available during the initiation of the process of involuntary admission. The girl is obviously scared and possibly thinks she is going to jail, which explains the resistance. Mental health professionals are trained to talk to these individuals, and the girl would have felt a little more comfortable talking to one. Additionally, an ambulance might be fitting to transport the girl to the hospital rather than handcuffing her to the police patrol car. But these cops, being as dirty as they are, they decided to spray this girl simply because they got bored of the entire incident. Stop! 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 Dear. Stop! Stop! I, I got her. I got her. I got her. Unbelievable. Following this, one police officer was suspended and two were placed on administrative leave two days after the release of a video. The incident also sparked hundreds of protests, with people marching on Rochester's snowy streets and gathering outside the city's police station. State officials, including Governor Andrew Cuomo, condemned the officer's actions. When asked about the incident, Mike Mazio, president of the Rochester Police Locust Club, the union representing the officers, said the officers made a decision to subdue the distraught girl and acted in a manner that didn't physically injure her. He also mentioned that there were no violations of policy because there are no clear policies. I'm not saying there's not better ways to do things, but let's be realistic here in what we're facing. And an officer there was dealing with the situation by himself until he could get information for anyone else to show up. They also want to deal with the situation that you have to get somebody into a car now because an ambulance is not there because of hypothermia and we had issues before about keeping somebody outside, keeping them inside. And then when they don't want to get in a car, you can see what you face. And what physical harm can you inflict on trying to get somebody into a car that's got their legs wrapped in around the doors and is impossible to deal with? It's not TV, it's not Hollywood. We don't have a simple 
be able to put our hands and have somebody instantly handcuffed and then comply. It's not a simple situation. I, I can't tell you anything about it. it was a, he came uh, to the scene shortly thereafter. They were trying to get her into the car and made a decision. He made a decision there uh, that he thought was the best action to take. Uh, you know, it result in her no injury to her. If had they had to go and push further and, and use more force, there's a good chance she could have been hurt worse. Hurt. It's it's very very difficult to get somebody into the back of a police car like that. And she's nine years old. Imagine what happens when we have a full-grown individual that we're dealing with. You talk about the psychological impact on the officers, but what about the psychological impact on the nine-year-old girl who had who had to deal with this traumatic situation? How about the traumatic situations that she's been dealing with? Did you listen to the words that her mother was saying to her? That's what's sad. That's what's disturbing. That's what officers go home and say, how does that girl have a chance in life? What's that officer supposed to do? What can they do? You know what? Understand how we respond to situations. Let me go from a man with a gun call, to a traffic accident, to a family disturbance, to another incident. After this, those officers probably had to go on to several other calls that night. This doesn't happen in a vacuum. Some of those officers probably didn't even get a chance to even discuss it until when? Hours later? Subsequently, the mother filed a lawsuit, which was likely settled for a disclosed amount because there is no information about what happened next. I'm like, sir, you please, can you please contact someone for mental health? I know the signs. I think my daughter is about to have a meltdown. He disregarded what I said, didn't make a call, didn't, didn't do anything, but just chased my daughter. And I definitely can't get the fact that I see a grown man literally pull out his pepper spray and pepper spray my daughter more than once. She's a nine-year-old girl. There have also been people who have criticized your behavior and said, um, and what you said to your daughter yes. during the incident. Um, what responsibility do you believe you have in this? And do you believe you may have escalated the situation? Um, I don't. I don't believe I, I escalated the situation because the situation was already escalated. She was already over the top. Do I feel do I feel like I came off a little aggressive? Absolutely, I have. There is there is no reason, there is no excuse. I don't care what happened. There is no reason you should have done my child like that.